welcome nana here uh, welcome all of you to the new training session on the inventory and procurement nana here and i'm going to facilitate you on this one it's a, going to be a very huge session very vast and then you will not be able to take notes while you are watching my session uh, you only have to read on the record and then take notes it is not possible to simultaneously take notes so but in the uh, sessions what you do is you listen to me very clearly and then if you have any doubts then and there you ask me fine otherwise what am i not be able to explain other things and then uh, so smaller doubts you can even postpone it to the end of the day otherwise if it is a very important one what am i immediately you press your space bar once when you press your space bar automatically it gets unmuted and then you can speak and then you release the space bar and then it gets muted automatically fine right? so that way you operate so do not uh, for forcibly what am i say make it on fully with the space bar you control it actually and that will be best way so i am going to mute all of you and then whenever you want you can open up your mic and then speak now so go there so let us now see the modalities of this training actually fine go there so let me go there and then share my screen so keep a watch on the recording also fine some of you i'm going to click on it so go there so this is the training which you are going to have now <clears throat> it is oraclenana.com/invpo so uh, many of you are asking why the zoom link it is now giving you a continuous day because i have to register for the continuous day then only it will come now so i have now registered so many continuous dates actually when will be okay that is why it is coming but it is only on saturday and sunday fine it will be on saturdays and then sundays fine no other day uh, on saturday between 5:30 pm india to 8:30 pm india and then sunday also the same timing fine i am expecting it uh, two months time but i i think it may even spill over it may go to even three months also i am not very sure about it so that are the dates now fine on the dates so that one <clears throat> so two days and then saturday and sunday 5:30 pm to 8:30 pm on every saturday and sunday now uh, when you go to the drive when you go to the drive.google.com <clears throat> you will be having this logo when you, you click on the shared with me on the left hand side and then on the right hand side make it as a list view and if it is a grid view it will be shabby like this now it will be a grid view like this so click on it and then make it as a list view it will be very beautiful for you to look at it and then you click on the shared with me on the left hand side it will not show you this now fine open it up now and then right click and then download on each and everything fine download on each and every folder and then I, you know so you create a one directory called nana training and then save all those things over here now. and then, and then every day session will be uploaded onto the inb po records if you open it up you can now see already two mock sessions are there and then one more uh, introductory session also there fine is there and then now onwards it will be uh, starting on 01 now <coughs> every day session will be starting on 01 <coughs> like that it will be keeping on going you know <coughs> at the end of session i will be converting it into mp mp4 record and then i will be uh, posting it over here now fine and then you can conveniently download those records every time you need not have to download the entire entire directory only those uh, files has to be downloaded now fine this is on the uh, uh, any doubts on this one uh, on the, uh, the drive google drive fine good fine you understood it fine. so you right and then this is the only one which will be going i am now going to create one more uh, additional docs records number 4 now I, I, in which i will not show you where exactly it is now i will be pushing it over there now now itself i will not push it now. so here i will now have uh, anybody is asking on the chat please somebody answer now fine look at that and then please answer that then uh, because i i cannot look at the chat now actually here chat message is coming like that is coming but i cannot look at the chat please answer uh, you open up your mic and then speak now fine with the space bar open up and then quickly speak and then leave the space bar okay, okay. so here i have made on additional docs and records and then here the first documentation is there now first document and then whenever i get any new documents i will be adding it on the fourth one now fine let me upload this now fine let me upload it additional docs records i am going to upload it over here i go that click on it i will now go to the folder upload i click on the folder upload for easiness i have kept it as two now two two actually two to the directory go there i will now choose my uh, additional directory record and then click on upload i am going to upload it and you can also see that it will be getting uploaded over here now <clears throat> so it is now getting upload upload so on the right hand side you can now see the uploading has started now fine go there click on it and then uh, whenever i make any new new document i will be uploading it on the additional docs records for now in this place i will be uploading it clear on this now fine go there so this one so this one you are going to see the first one you are going to see in this session actually <clears throat> okay this is on the google drive and then in the uh, what's called telegram group if you go there i have now shared the instances over here now you can see the instances over here so the instances so the instances will be having a url followed by a password actually <clears throat> uh one second where is my pasting now yeah this is the one see uh, it is now starting on esev fine dev 23 fine now coming and then the end end one is a password actually 
this up to this is the password so this is a user is a login name and then the password and then the user names are put over here now these are the user names you can use hundreds of users so preferably since it is a supply chain training you use the scm users or procurement users now. procurement users are starting at what the first user is prc01 dot student and then prc02 dot student like there up to 40 dot student so there are 40 users are there and then the instructor will be using this instance of and prc00 dot instructor that is having a high power so multiple people can also use it but what people have done is they have logged in into this and then they have changed the password so others cannot use that is not a correct practice i told many number of times not to change the passwords but they have changed the passwords so some of the users they own it so if the scm01 dot student is not working you try an scm07 or 08 it will work now fine nobody would have modified all the passwords up to that now fine can somebody say it's clear now on the username or anybody anybody has got a doubt please ask me so you all username and password no 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 i have got a doubt this okay. time yeah. see uh, we'll get the it security uh, user once again we are not gone into the instance at all okay okay yeah. we are now talking about the usernames and passwords fine yeah, yeah. only the relevant questions please ask when sure. we come inside we'll not talk about okay The usernames and passwords are clear upon this. Fine. You should not ask again a question. Where are the usernames? Fine. You what you do is you go and then take a copy of this one. Fine. Completely take a copy because this one is the one which Dev Seven is the one which is working for the past one month now. Fine. Uh, it is preferable to set up everything on Dev Seventeen. Dev Seventeen is working excellently for the past one month. So set it up on Dev Seventeen actually. You go there, take a complete copy and then open up a Word file and then paste it over there. Now. Every time you cannot come over here and then uh, see the uh, what happens uh, the instance names actually. Take a copy of it, put it in a Word file, and then there you can very well uh, you can refer your own Word file for these instances. So whenever an update is there, I will definitely update, post it over here. So those updates you correct it on your Word file. Is it clear? Anybody can say that is clear now? Yes. Yeah, so so all the ACM users are set up as a buyer also, right? We are not gone into the instance at all. Why you are asking questions now? Fine. We are not talking about instance URL, password, and then username. When we go inside, you talk. Fine. Do not ask any irrelevant questions at at, 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 at the inappropriate time actually. Fine. We will have to come there. Okay. Is it clear now? Fine. First of all, username, passwords, and then uh, uh, this thing now. Uh, username. Yes, it's clear. Password. That's clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to clear. take a copy clear. and then keep it on the Word file. Remember, you have to keep it clear, copy sir. and then keep it on the Word file. Good, good, good. Fine. That's clear, good. sir. Yeah. So, uh, any clear. doubts? Anybody has got any doubts on the username, password, and then the, uh, the URL? These three are clear now. Fine. Take a copy and then keep it on the Word file, and then uh, you refer the file, and then whenever you see an update, you update your Word file now. Yeah, no, 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 sir. All user names should be having the same password, right? No, no, no. First, yeah, yeah, yeah. All user names are having the same password, of course. All yeah, hundred users link. are having the same password. All for each link. Users are having the same password. Yeah, for each link. For each link, of course. Good then, fine. So let us now, first of all, set our uh, understanding clear. Then afterwards, what happens? Uh, we will be able to launch our uh, learning things uh, inside now. Good, fine. So this is all clear. So user names and log. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, this is on the first one fine on the uh, thing and then uh, whenever you have a small doubt why or the training related doubt ask in the whatsapp group why what's the first group we have whatsapp group so in the whatsapp group uh, you ask all the doubts anything which is generic like what happens you want to have implementation or support issue or some other issue then you address it in telegram because telegram has got lots of users and so they uh, you address the bigger issues now fine training related ones you only put it on the fusion inventory procurement training so here only you put it fine in this place you put all the training related ones somebody will answer you if somebody is not answering you then you go to telegram now. clear on this now how to work on it as far as uh, the working is concerned yes, right. sir. in this place you do it so in this in this whatsapp yes, group uh, you will be putting it if the number of participants cross 256 i may shift to everybody will be shifted to telegram actually because whatsapp has got a limitation now fine we will not see about how many are part starting uh, joining So based upon which I will not take a dynamic decisions. So I will be communicating to all of you. Hey, there are more than ten, nineteen uh, uh, messages in the chat. Uh, somebody please answer, or otherwise open your mic and then answer also. Fine. Uh, you can even uh, speak to me. That is the best one. Fine. As a consultant, you are supposed to speak to me. Fine. Doesn't matter. You take some time, and then otherwise very very silly. That is okay. Fine. Otherwise any reasonable one, you can answer. Fine. Or somebody else also can answer. Good. Then. Fine. So WhatsApp, and then uh, your uh, what's called uh, Telegram group is now clear. So instance URL, password, and the usernames are clear. <clears throat> Quite cool. Now let us go there and then start our activity. <clears throat> okay, what else to be uh, told about? And then I told about the drive also. Drive how it is all organized. This is also told actually. So let us go there and then I will now go up and then take up one of the instances actually. Okay. 
it's a very vast and then very big subject so you have to concentrate and then learn a lot okay and then uh, try to use the monday to friday say, times and then i do it and then if you have any doubts you contact me and then if i am not on another training i am i am going to conduct a training for pwc and then if i am not that, I, that is that will be from 10 am to 7 pm actually outside the training hours you can contact me always and then uh, i will now try to provide you the solutions let me take up coffee hang over if you want it so i will now take up this one now hang over right click on that i will now click on it directly <clears throat> it will now go there so go there i will now take up the password now the password i have taken a copy hang over that moment so go there i will now click on the erp scm cloud login now fine and so when you click on it it will be coming to multiple logins like this now click on the erp scm cloud login go there <clears throat> So I have my own doubt that somebody might have uh, what happens used it. Fine, go there. I will not say PRC zero eight dot student because people used to change the passwords. Now, fine, go there. Click on it and then go inside. So I am now going inside. Fine. I will not give a username and password. That password I copied, I have gone now. So I can even save it. Otherwise, I will leave it now because I am not going to work on it. You are only going to work on it. Fine, go there. Click on it. So this is called the Springboard. Actually, I am not going to teach you about how to customize the Springboard. i'm not going to teach you how to customize the report thing over so you go to the right hand side because this is a shabby looking one and then it is not exactly good now when right? if you go click on it now and then click on it it will be coming like this often so many headings are coming you have to choose the appropriate heading and then upload the icon again to it so i'm going to customize the springboard now there's the first lesson of i'm going to comment i will not go there i will not go to the configuration here i click on the configuration and then i will not click on the sandbox configuration and sandbox please don't try to take any notes just watch it and then see and then on the next rerun you will be doing it now and do not take any notes now just keenly watch and then if you have any doubts then and there you ask me the configuration i go to the sandbox now i am not going to get a sandbox sandbox is nothing but a development environment so in the environment when you made it what happens you are not supposed to perform any setup and transactions you are going to change the look and feel now i know that one i will not go to the sandbox and the red and say you have got a create sandbox so i click on the create sandbox i will not say it is a test one and then i will not enable the appearance on the left hand side i am not going to only do it you got you in the sandbox you can do plenty of things now they will be taught in a technical training this many things can be modified your technical training will be now i will not teach you minimal one fine appearance i am not doing it fine go that click on it i will not go and then click on the create and enter button on the right hand side now on the right hand side what about you click on the create and enter nana sir uh, sorry to disturb this is ramu here yeah uh, this to customer spring board we can uh, do it from uh, the main window as well just click on place i i can also we can do it right oh ho oh, oh. i don't know uh, there are multiple ways of doing it fine go there so it, 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 it can be the customization of sync board can be done for the main board it's fine you try try to do it fine go there just click on place i can yeah, yeah i'm telling one of the ways it's, it can be done in multiple ways also okay so yeah, click on the left side test and then here what happens you go to the sandbox detail now and click on the sandbox there may be multiple ways of doing it you explore now fine go there So here I will now after after the test and the details you click on the appearance now fine now you cannot remember it when you rerun you take notes and then from there you try to do it now fine remember when you are uh, when you are testing it if you can uh, test it from your notebooks uh, writing it will be excellent actually because every time you cannot watch the video remember write the notes clearly and then if you are able to do the practices from your notes that is good and then later on without notes you have to do. that is the ultimate proficiency fine right? without referring anything you have to do it so first take a notes and then if you can reproduce from the notes it will be excellent actually fine right? because every time you cannot run the video and then stop stop and then go there and then watch now fine right? your notes will be very handy for you it's a very vast course and then uh, try to what happens uh, uh, make very good notes on this click on the appearance now fine right? go there so click on the appearance on the sandbox details i gone there i am not clicking on the appearance now. it takes some time you can see in the bottom it is now waiting waiting is coming fine go there it it has not come to this place now now in the themes you drop down and then i am going to choose the dark blue that is the best one now fine there are multiple things are there you can even experiment on those things later now fine click on the dark blue dark blue i am choosing it i am choosing the dark blue <clears throat> and then here on the default home page layout fine go there drop it down from the banner you make it as a panel now panel is the best one now make it as a panel in the default home page layout make it as a panel and then here the icons are big actually i will now change the icon to small now change the icon to small fine that's it fine so the page is now customized i have not customized the appearance of the page now fine so this much i am changing it i will not click on apply on the right hand side so once when you apply it will now ask you to what happens uh, uh, do a name now fine the theme name has been because dark blue has been changed actually by me so you have to make a new theme i will now say test one a new theme name has been passed the dark blue was a theme and then i have modified it i have now applied it and then modified it and click on okay now which what happens in order take notes when you are doing it not now now you know only watch now. i given okay and then you can see in the left hand side bottom waiting is coming <clears throat> just wait till the time comes so go there now click on apply now 
I'm going to apply. You can see in the left hand side bottom waiting is coming. Find that. Click on the home icon now. Find click on the home icon. Then this place there is the home icon now. and click on the home icon. Now it has got changed, but it has not got a good one now. Fine. It has not come to the dark blue at all. Even though I given a dark blue, it has not come now. Find that one. And now what I'm going to do is I will not go there. I will not publish this sandbox. Now this goal goal icon is very good. That's other than the other one. Now. I go there. So click on the test and then I will not publish it. I click on the publish. I'm not going to publish. This is one simple method of doing it. Fine, that I will not give yes on this now. Fine, click on yes. I'm going to publish it now. And then again, click on the publish button. So by publishing it, what happens? The springboard is now getting published. We are now publishing it, and then the springboard is getting personalized. We have personalized the springboard. So you can see in the left hand side bottom waiting is coming. So don't do anything at all till the waiting is coming. Yes, now I will now log out and log in. I'm going to click on it. I will now sign out and sign in. Click on confirm and then come out of it now. And then I will now go again for erc09. Dot student. I have given some other user now. I am now giving some other user. Doesn't matter. Fine. And then this springboard customization is uh, common for all the users actually. Click on it. Now coming. Now have a look at it. Now it's come. The dark blue has come. So now this is a better way of visualization. You can do wonders on this now. Fine. Uh, later on, you experiment on it. And then again, don't put so many shabby colors and other things. Fine, it will be very difficult. Now, this is for a user actually. So once when you personalize a, what's called the appearance, this is called a springboard. The springboard appearance is personalized. This is common for all the users. We can even make it user specific. Fine, for which you have to give, a, you have to talk to a technical team now. Technical team will tell you only for me it has to look like this. For others, it has to be look other way, other way now. So that can also be done. So technical team will not tell you in depth of it. So this is a, for our working, it's okay. Now there are so many icons that I don't want this many icons. Now. Fine, I don't want this icon. As a user, what happens? I click on this one. This is called personalized springboard now. Find this icon now and click on the personalized springboard. Click on it now. Find it will not come over here. I don't want sales. I don't want uh, what happens? Supply portal. I don't want uh, what's called expenses. Likewise, whatever you don't want, you remove it now. So once when you remove it, what happens? You cannot see all those things will go away now. <clears throat> Awards and then in the tools you need it now. Uh, Intercompany accounting, budgetary controls, me. Go there. So, what is this? is a quiet fine. Fixed assets. I'm not going to get enough time on it. And then, as and when, I remove it fine. And the main one, tools, is okay. <clears throat> and the configuration, I remove it. Partner management, I remove it. And go there, go down. And then, the my client groups, remove it. Help desk, I don't want it now. I'm going to click on OK. Now, the number of icons will now reduce. It is, it is reduced, but even it has to be still reduced. Not fine. So, make it very compact. Of whatever modules you are working upon, that only you do it, and then teach this to the end customers. So they don't; they only have to do the springboard personalization. Actually, fine. There's a, there is a springboard customization icons. Whatever they want to remove, let them remove. Don't go to each and every individual and then ask them, and then you do it for them. No, no. Allow them to do it. Whatever they don't want to remove. At any point of time, even if you click on it, and then we can even bring it back. If you put a tick mark. Sales will again come. Fine. Okay, okay, sales will be coming. So likewise, you can do it. Now. Whatever you want, you can do it. Now. Is this clear now? Fine. How to remove the icons on the springboard now? Yeah, clear. Yeah, yeah, clear. Yes, sir. 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 Oh, Sikandar. <clears throat> okay. You are. Yes, join lead and then I want to read. Now I will be going into my company's instance. I will click on it. I will not go to the company's instance. So I have a username and password. I go inside. Sir, I have a question here. Uh, uh, like we have published the changes in the sandbox, hmm. so, but somehow by mistake I have published something. But I again want to re revert back. No, so no, it's how... not possible. No, you have to only do one more sandbox and then make a uh, what happens? A new one. No, it's okay. not possible okay. to revert it actually. Okay, thank you. Create one more sandbox only. So I am now logging in, and then before I start, I am going to give an introduction to ERP actually. Fine. You know how what exactly is ERP, 
and then after the introduction is complete then i will now start my exercises over here right let me introduce it so if you go there click on it i have now gone to my there my tutu is basically your, your training directory actually here i go to the e business documentation i go to the inventory i go to the day one and then here what is erp so you go to the e business documentation inventory inventory day one and then what is erp we are going to begin <coughs> double click on <coughs> what is interface is let us take an example fine suppose you are running a small grocery shop named janata grocery you are running it so that the typical operation as a shop owner is what you basically buy groceries from a big buy big seller and then stock it in your shop and then now people come to your shop and then for the day to day needs and then they are going to buy stuff from you that is how your janata grocery is going to function occasionally you may not be carrying items or run out of stock that people may ask for you so you will not take a uh, notepad and then pen and then you will not uh, write it on it and then you will not promise that i will not give it to you later on anyway. so far so good now let us now use some entities before we proceed now the big seller from whom you are buying the stock is called the vendor or supplier actually you are going to buy it so he is known as a vendor or supplier the people who come to your shop to buy things are known as customers actually and then the stock which you are keeping it is known as inventory so these are all the erp terminology now fine so supplier or vendor customers and inventory are the few terminologies now so far we have identified few entities that play an active role in your day to day operations as time goes by the business expands and then you take orders fine over phone fine now they are coming and then giving it now over phone and then providing services to deliver the items to the customers actually so you hire people for doing this job so you will be having what employees in your organization you will be having there is another erp terminology so in a small shop you typically manage the bookkeeping activities by hand using a notepad and similar things now imagine the same setup on a larger scale where you have more than 10000 customers and then 1000 vendors and then more than 1000 employees and have a huge warehouse to maintain for the inventory do you think that this can work it will not work with the pen and paper the, the entire business will come to a stop actually you cannot do it to facilitate such big businesses companies like oracle corporation have created a huge software known as erp this called enterprise resource plan they provide a seamless integration across very many facilities of your company and then they make visible to the top management about what is happening in sales what is happening in purchase what is happening in manufacturing what is happening in maintenance etc etc every facility is seamlessly integrated and then the top management will be knowing it so this software this enterprise resource planning or known as erp provides you visualization across all it is all, is one of oracle applications one of them the top one is sap systems applications and products and data data processing is the top one in the world actually and then oracle comes second in fact i worked on sap for more than 4 years as a end user and now afterwards i learned oracle but even now i hail only sap sap is a better software when compared to oracle so it has got beautiful features mainly for the implementers actually implementers it is somewhat difficult as far as oracle is concerned whereas for implementers sap is also easy sap is easy for implementers as well as end users also whereas implementers it's a nightmare in oracle actually Now, even though uh, when i came out of sap and then uh, when i started exploring the functionalities of sap in oracle i found that everything is available in oracle also whatever i have seen in sap everything is available in oracle oracle has got all the functionalities only thing is configuring is somewhat difficult in oracle <clears throat> now coming to think of it now friend oracle is not a one huge software there is a pieces of software actually for purchasing we have one piece for sales we have one piece and then for manufacturing we have one piece of software so all of them are integrated to us each other actually they are all known as modules actually all the piece of software are known as modules actually. now what is integrated friend <coughs> so purchasing and accounts payables are integrated when you make a purchase this module is take care of the payment actually to the vendors so they are all integrated so it works as well so first of all you go through this first document file it's got lot of things i don't want to go through the complete one so it has got lots of things so that will give you a good idea about what exactly is erp fine right? you go through this document that will be giving you a lot of things now <clears throat> now next topic we are going to see this is the one what is the erp and go there click on it i will not go to what am i saying efficient inventory i will not go to erp evolution that is on uh, i have shown you the navigation also you note it down now <clears throat> now on the fusion inventory documentation we have got on erp evolution document i right? double click on it you are going to see erp evolution in the early 1950s when the industrial revolution took place production units were concentrating on improving production and productivity right? that is the this is after the second world war actually <clears throat> in late 1970s they want to eliminate the waste actually which will aid the process fine right? 
yeah, what's called a yeah, material waiting to be consumed. It is not in consumed, it is considered as a waste. An ideal mission is considered as a waste. A manpower, no, if he is not utilized, it is a waste. So they are all known as the industrial waste, actually. Fine. How to use it? Fine. That thought came into 1970. At the time, what I must to uh, at the time only the just in time concept came in. It is an excellent concept, even now, also it is a very excellent concept. Right? So when you wanted to manufacture, you buy from supplier and then you do it. And then you bring it to the finished goods and then immediately send it to the customers. So you should not have any stock on the raw material side as well as in the finished goods side. So just in time has to what happens uh, be there actually. And it is really, really very difficult to achieve the JT. JIT is a very tight concept. You cannot achieve it. And then if you're able to achieve it, it's excellent actually. So to JIT, what happens? Uh, there are so many things came in now, fine, like 5S, Six Sigma, total quality management, etc. were all evolved aiming at a JIT just in time everything must be just in time there should not be any waste at all there should not be any waste at all so no waste of anything of uh, what happens the materials or machine or manpower everything must be utilized properly and so it all came in now so even with these concepts we had a problem now so what the problem the owner is there so the maintenance department will say i need a machinery the owner will now consult the finance department they say sir we don't have any money we only have to borrow outside now. and then at what rate he will now see his own packet, his money, and then wait. the projects will now put some requirement. The production planning control will not require. So his total time is basically bogged down in managing the internal resources, basically. <clears throat> so every resource will now ask him for something, and then he will be answering it. But his job is what? Not to concentrate on the internal ones. He has to concentrate, concentrate externally. How is competitors behaving? How it is being sold to the market? How to improve our sales when compared to the other competitors? So he has to concentrate on outside the circle for which he don't have any time at all. He's always bogged down on what happens uh, managing his own resources. So a shift in taking, thinking takes place in the early 80s actually. So instead of optimization of resources, why not we optimize the business process? This has resulted in the ERP. So optimization of resources to optimization of business process has landed up on a ERP. So the result is the ERP actually. ERP came in for this one. So ERP started concentrating in a different manner as far as the business process. We don't see what exactly is the business process. Now. Go down. So what is the business process? Your business process is going to be triggered by a demand. Whenever a demand comes and hit it, it will not trigger it. And then you're going to perform an action on the business process and then the demand gets fulfilled. So they have, you have to split everything as a small, small BP now. As far as possible, smaller BPs, you make it and then it will be hit by a demand and then take an action on the BP and then finally it gets fulfilled. So I will not show you one sample business process here. Not that. So I'm now manufacturing monitor. So I'm now manufacturing monitor for which I need a picture tube. So the manufacturing department needs a picture tube. <coughs> they will be creating a purchase requisition for this. <coughs> so his boss has to approve because it is a money spending now. Fine. The purpose of purchasing module is to reduction of the spend. And so you need to have an authorization. Fine. His boss will be, what happens, will be approving it actually. His boss will be approving it. So it gets fulfilled over here now, once when he approves it. So once when the purchase requisition for, for purchasing the purchase picture tube is approved, then it will now go to the next level. It will now go to the next level. It will now go to purchase orders. Now, the purchase officer will now send uh, what happens, uh, request for quotation from various suppliers. He will now obtain the quotation from everybody. And then he will now create what happens, a purchase order. And then that will be approved by his manager. So the second BP is now getting completed. Now. Fine. He has taken an action and then it got fulfilled. Actually. The third BP will now come to the suppliers. Now. So he will now supply the picture tubes. He will now manufacture it or buy from a bigger distributor. And then he's going to supply the materials to you. So the stores is going to be received. So then the third BP is getting completed. The fourth BB is inspection. You are going to perform. He is going to supply it. You are going to perform a quality person inspection, and then it will now pass the PA check. Then afterwards, what happens? Invoice creation. So the invoice will be sent to the people. The person who has requested has to certify that is okay. All items are okay. So once when it is accepted, then he will now certify the invoice. Then once when it is, it will now go to the accounts payables department, and then they will now make a check for whatever the payment actually. So your requirement of a picture tube has uh, has been split into six BPs. And if you electronically wire the BPs now, BP1 to BP6, if you electronically wire, that is upon completion of BP1, BP2 has to be triggered. Upon 2, 3 has to be triggered, so on, so on. You do it, it becomes a workflow. So here, if you make the picture tube and then approve it, automatically the purchase officer will know it. A <coughs> notification that he has to be <coughs> purchase order. <coughs> the supplier will be informed by email that he has to supply. The quality inspection department will be getting a notification upon receipt in the gate, actually. The invoice will be verified by the users now. Right? So everybody will now get appropriate notification and then the whole process will now go automatically. So in this one, the owner need not intervene at all. 
So if there is anything getting stuck, what happens? We have brought in the ERP and then we have now set a timeline. BP1 is completed. BP2 is not completed for more than three days time. You take a report. Now. So our GM's uh, uh, technical assistant will now take a report. Now. That girl will not take a report. BP1 completed and BP2 is not completed for the, uh, it is now waiting for four days. She will not take such things. Now. How many cases are like this? So in the meeting, we will now discuss only the problematic areas. Now, now the GM will ask, hey, are, why are you not made a purchase order? He's now waiting on your table. Sir, I got only one, one, one quote from one supplier. But the company policy is what at least could take two quotes and then only add an order. So I'm waiting for one more quote. I'm not getting it. Then he will now talk to the what happens the requester now. How urgent it is now. He says, I am very urgent, sir. Okay, you bypass it and then place the order. He will now give a decision immediately. Then the purchase order will go away. So they will now discuss only on the problematic area, and then that that solution will be given immediately. And then the meeting, which used to take place for six to seven hours, was getting completed in 45 minutes on Friday. Everything we used to have and now. <clears throat> because we have the agenda set, what to discuss. <clears throat> All the problematic areas will be uh, made an agenda, and then uh, the decision will be made by the top man, the vice president of the supply chain will be making a decision. Now. So uh, that way we used to work. So by this optimization, by, by what happens, uh, instead of optimizing the resources, when you optimize the business process, the owner gets free. Now. His time is available. Now. He may not have to worry at all. Everything has got a BP, and then the BP will now go automatically on its own flow. And then only for the top level approval, it will come to him. Otherwise, what happens? The intermediate, it'll, he will not be bothered at all. So ERP was very, very handy for very many industries, actually. So it has not come. And then uh, the biggest problem in industry, what? The finished goods stocking, actually. How to stock the finished goods? So make to stock is the one. So here, uh, uh, you will know uh, what happens. It is a Coca-Cola manufacturer. As and when the order comes in, fine. They will know, uh, have a forecasting. Tomorrow, the sun is going to be 40 degrees or 45 degrees, they will not say there will be a lot of consumption of Coca-Cola. Immediately you make it. Now. So you'll be having what? The, the product product complexity is low and then the lead time for manufacturing is also low. The next one is pick to order. Next one is assemble to order. Next one is make to order and then engineer to order. So these are the many multiple ways of stocking actually. So we will now, in a company, there will be normally two or three methods of stocking. Normally a PTO, ATO and a MTO will also be coupled together. That will be available in the industry. So depending upon the what's called the complexity of thing and then the lead time for manufacture, so company may opt for multiple levels of stocking actually. Either I make the stock or a PTO or a ATO or MTO, whichever is required. This is the stocking of the finished goods actually. So this one is now complete. Fine. This is the ERP evaluation. So any doubts on this now? No, sir. No, sir. But now we'll not see about how uh, the thing is going to be there now. Fine. Don't go there. I will not go there to do. I will not go to the additional docs records number four. Here I made one global enterprise structure. Fine, double count. So we're going to have a look at the global enterprise structure. So global enterprise structure. I'm going to have a look at it. Now. <clears throat> How to maximize this? Okay, this much. How to bring it out here? This one. I want to see only this one. Ah, I don't. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, fusions global enterprise structure. We are going to discuss about. So you will be having multiple enterprises over here. So let us say Reliance Industries has purchased a fusion uh, SaaS uh, license actually. So he will be uh, trading uh, on entry. Yeah, tell me, yeah, tell me. Any yeah, one thing, class, you know, yeah. Only one thing I want to ask: like, uh, will these points will be taken if somebody is already working on EBS and how the change will be from EBS to? Yeah, EBS? I don't want to compare EBS to this. No, fine, go there. That will be a big, uh, big one. So like you, it will, will be concentrating only on fusion actually. Fine. Mm -hmm. So in the fusion, see, we can have multiple enterprises actually. Here we can have only one. Okay. So I don't want to make a comparison between EBS and other things. Fine. Uh, later on, uh, if you want, we can even discuss upon this. Okay, okay. Then I will ask you only, on yeah. only on a fusion of angle. So because, we yeah. can have only one enterprise, whereas in EBS, we can have multiple enterprises. So in this place, in fusion, when you buy a license, you can have only one enterprise. Let us say Reliance Industries has purchased, we have to create only one enterprise in the top. Below which, we will be having one more entity called a legal entity. So this is also a government reporting entity. It is also known as a GRE. And then this is the heart of a structure. Whereas in EBIS, it's not so. Here, this is the heart of a structure. This basically wounds the activity. For example, below Reliance Industries, we have Reliance Petro, we have Reliance Info, Reliance Power. There are multiple companies are there. So a legal entity is considered as a company, actually. This is nothing but a group of companies. This is nothing but a company, actually. Reliance Industries is registered in Bombay, whereas Reliance Info is registered in Delhi, actually. Everything is a company. 
and then they will be producing their profit and loss statement to the appropriate uh, authority in that particular area in bombay what happens they will no report and delhi they will no report so the profit and loss loss statement and then the balance sheet everything will be reported to the particular uh, the governing government reporting entity fine the gres will be reporting to them so you will be having multiple lds with it the ledger is basically a logical one this logical entity is going to what happens help the legal entity in creating all the financial statements fine so the ledger is going to work on the financial modules previously we thought about it talked about modules now so on those modules there are five modules are there in financials on all the five modules the ledger is going to facilitate all the transactions to be performed so the transactions are held by the legal entity and then ledger facilitates this function below which we will be having one more unit called business unit so the business unit is a very powerful uh, one when compared to e business between, uh, between legal entity and ledger there is one to one relation or how is it that you have to talk to financials okay right? Uh, LE ledger. We are going to create. I am not going to have only one here and then one there. Fine. Uh, I I think it is many to many. I am not very yeah, sure about it. Many to many, not. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Ledger can be attached to many legal entities. Yes, it is a many to many relationship. Oh. One ledger to many LE, and then one LE to many ledger. Fine. It is a many to many relationship. You will be learning about it fully in a financial training actually. Uh, yeah. Ledger uh -huh. is based on the country. Ledger is based on the country we do. Okay. Uh -huh. He is saying uh -huh. ledger is country specific one. And I was always thinking that uh, the ledger level, it is going to have different cur uh, currencies across different, uh, like uh, whatever branches that uh, Reliance has across different countries. That is called. Uh, that is the one. Okay. That is the one which would come here in the ledger. No, I'll. I'll. Sorry, uh, Nana, can I answer this question? Okay, come on, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, see, ledger is basically any of the four C changes: the currency, calendar, your chart of account structure, and the accounting convention. So, uh, if you are saying Reliance Petroleum is India and Reliance Info is in US, so there will be multiple ledger created. Okay, so right. for India, there will be one ledger. It it cannot be a different ledger for India, and uh, uh, for multiple ledger, we don't create. It will be a single ledger unless this four C changes. Correct. I I understand that, uh, but what I I would was uh, I was thinking is like suppose I create Reliance within India. I am trying to do an implementation for Reliance. Mm -hmm. I create one Reliance uh, and bring all those uh, different activities as uh, business units, isn't it? Yeah, See, you uh, can, you can uh, discuss upon this uh, yes, later yeah, on with your uh, financial counterparts. No fine. So it's again a big subject, and then how they are all interlinked. That is again a big subject, right? We will now leave it. And as a consultant, we did not be much bothered about the creation of legal entities and all, right? It's something to, to do with create, the finance. We are going to create everything now. Fine. We are going to begin creating a legal entity in our exercise. Fine. Everybody will be creating their own legal entity. Actually, fine. we are going to. Okay. Okay. We will be doing it, and then we will now see what how is it going to do it now. The business unit is again a big one when compared to E was now. It is known as an operating unit, but it is more powerful than this one. Here, all the sales team, fine. So the purchasing team, the HRMS team, fine. The top people basically, all will be housed over here. You can even imagine this is a ten-story building where what happens? All your monitoring and then your, your top management will be sitting over here. So we can even say, yeah, Mumbai centralized the sales and purchases the business unit. Now, fine. We can have multiple BUs basically. The BUs will be basically reporting daily. The BU facilitates all the transactions from a supply chain front as well as from the financial front actually on the daily. Transactions are held in legal entity, and then the BU facilitates all the transactions. Now, in this diagram, if you see, in industry, we will be having customers at one end, like Air India and other things. So, Reliance Petro may be having so many customers, thousands and thousands of customers, and then once when the customer needs a material, he will be what happens? There will be a, a, a customer service representative who will be sitting in the business unit. That is called CSR. CSR is nothing but a customer service representative. He will be booking the sales order with the customer, and then the demand flows into the business unit. That we need to supply what happens the petrol, the petrol or the diesel or matter or whatever it is. We have to we have to, we have to supply it again. So once when the demand comes in, the CSR will be going it and then what happens? We we have to let us say buy and then manufacture it. Let us say. So a purchase order will be created on a supplier, and then the demand will be passing over to him. <clears throat> so the supplier will now supply the material, and then we will now be receiving it on a raw material stores. This is called an inventory order. is called inventory order so we'll be receiving it and then we will now make what happens a movement of the material to the manufacturing unit and then we are going to manufacture the finished goods and then we will now bring it to the warehouse and then from the warehouse we are going to supply to the customers so in the industry what happens uh, typically we will be having a flow of demand in one direction supply in the opposite direction so the team which is sitting 
will also be having a planning department. The responsibility of the planning department is to balance the demand and supply. This is called DS balancing, the demand supply balancing. So if the demand becomes excess and then the supply is less, the customers will be shouting on you. If the supply is become excess and then the demand is what happens less, the owner will shout because his money is now lying as a TV. Thousands of TVs are lying in the finished good, whereas nobody is there to take it up. So he will now shout. So the planning department has to plan in such a fashion that they have to map the demand, match the demand to your supply chain. So DS balancing is not a big, is a big task actually. When I was working in 1983, everything is on papers actually. On paper, we used to sit and do it now. Nowadays, it's all totally computer. So we have the ERP in place now. <clears throat> so the ERP has got a what's called a planning uh, central actually. A planning central is there. It has got three modules. One is the demand planning. One is the supply planning. One is the operations, uh, sales and operations planning. So the planning department has got three modules. So with the help of it, it effectively ma manages the demand and supply. <clears throat> okay. And then afterwards, we have the sales module, the order management module, which will not take care of the customer's need. <clears throat> order management will not take care of it. <clears throat> we have the procurement module, which will not take care of the supplier's needs. Actually. And then we have the inventory module, which will not take care of your raw materials, manufacturing, and then warehouse. So depending upon the complexity, fine, there may be multiple such inventory organizations and then you'll be having plenty of customers and suppliers. I was working in Bilai Steel Plant. So the Bilai Steel Plant is a centralized place. Fine. So we have only one inventory all. That itself will now act as a raw material and then that will be doing the manufacturing and then that will also do the warehouse. So you may not have multiple things like this. This is a logical representation. Physically, it may be one or it may be even many. You may have 100 warehouses, 200 raw materials spread throughout the country actually depending upon the convenience. So we in this training, we are going to see about how the inventory module is going to behave and then how the procurement module is going to behave. These are the only two things we are going to see. Now. So we'll now come to the inventory module. Fine. So this is basically an inventory order. Let's say I want to buy a laptop from a supplier actually. So I have to make the laptop as an item and then define the item and then I will now assign it to this raw material stores. So once when the item is defined with all the attributes, Fine. There will be plenty of attributes in there. So once when it is defined, then only we can buy it from suppliers. Actually. So there will be lakhs of items which we have to define and then assign it to the appropriate uh, organization, inventory organization. So once when you assign it, then you become eligible for buying it from him. Now. So as far as activities are concerned, as far as transactions are concerned in any inventory org, we have got only three transactions. One is what? Receive material, issue material, and then transfer material. You are going to transfer it from here to manufacturing or here to warehouse. You are going to transfer it. So receive, issue, and transfer of the three transactions which take place on an inventory org. Nothing else. Only only three transactions there as far as the inventory org is concerned. And then as far as other functionality is concerned, transactions are only three. But items which are defined, fine, for example. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Receive. What were the three? Receive. Receive, issue, and transfer are the only three transactions which we perform on an inventory org. The Thank transactions you. which you're going to perform are a receive, issue, and transfer. Okay. Now. When, I, when an item is not defined, let us say laptop. Laptop is warranted for serial number. So the laptop will be serial controlled. When you manufacture a, a medicine, the medicine will be having a batch number. It is manufactured in January 20, January 21, February 21. So yeah, the medicine will be expiring after 12 months now. So the batch is known as a lot. So items will be having five different types of controls. One is a serial control, one is a lot control, revision control, locator control, and then material status control. So we are going to see all the controls of an item and then how to uh, set it up and then perform the assignment of an item to an org actually. And then later on perform the transactions. Actually. So we will now create an item. We will now assign it to an inventory org and then we will now perform a transaction on the inventory org. Now. So we will now see the controls. And then we will now see how we are going to transfer it between two orgs. And then there are multiple ways of transfers. Transfers is a big one. And then whenever the stock level goes below, right? And then when the manufacturing module will not be able to supply it. So we have to automatically replenish or backfill this now. Right? Whatever is there, we have to backfill this now. So how to backfill it? So that is called replenishment. We are going to see how to replenish it from a supplier actually. So whenever the stock level goes down in any other, we can even replenish it. So we can even do the replenishment or backfilling. So controls, transfers, replenishments. Let us say I'm now manufacturing uh, washers. Now. So the system says one lakh washers. If you go on and count, there will be only 95,000. Because something might have been spilled down or it is now lost, stolen. Fine. There are so many reasons because of which what happens, the actual stock may not 
show the system stop now. So there will be an inaccuracy which will be there. So we have to correct the material accuracy. So one is accuracy. So these are the four topics which you're going to see. Fine. Controls, transfers, replenishment, accuracy, you're going to see on an inventory order. Right. These are the four major topics which you're going to see on an inventory order. As far as procurement is concerned, uh, I will know. Uh, I don't want to say anything here. Yeah. But as and when I do it, I will not show it to you. So, no. so this is called the end-to-end -end supply execution. So initially, if you have a planning module like a demand planning or a supply planning or a sales and operations planning, we will not perform an end-to-end -end supply planning. And then afterwards, we will not perform an end-to-end -end supply execution, supply chain execution. The supply chain starts with suppliers at one end and then customers at the other end. That is called a supply chain actually. Right. So where the demand flows in one direction and then the supplies flows in opposite direction. So if you don't have any planning module, it is the responsibility of the people sitting on the business unit to plan and then match the demand to supply manually. Uh, if you have a module that will take care of automatically, otherwise we have to do it manually actually. So this is how the industry works now. Any doubts on this now? <clears throat> so we are now going to create a complete enterprise starting from legal entity onwards up to inventory on. We will now create everything. And then we will now do the inventory setups as well as procurement setups on the created enterprise actually. On the created enterprise, we are going to do it. Is that thing clear on the industry about how it's all functioning? Any doubts on this now? Good. Tell me. Can you speak a bit loud because your voice is not clear actually? Uh, is it any better now? Yeah, tell me. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So uh, inventory arc is something similar to a manufacturing plant, physically. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. See, the yeah, inventory arc can be a manufacturing plant. It may be a pure stocking organization, or it can be a warehouse. Now we will now see about how to set up, how to make an inventory arc as a manufacturing unit, how to make it as a pure only stocking, and all this will be having a look at it once when you set up. Okay. Good. Then fine. So this is the global enterprise structure. Now we will now uh, look at uh, one more slide on this. Now I'm going to come out. I don't know how to almost right now. So go to space. Where so uh, in Fusion, we use this global enterprise structure only, right? Of course, yeah. In the Fusion, we are using the global enterprise structure. OK. So here I go there. In the 2-2, two -two, what happens? I go to the Fusion inventory documentation. So I will now open up the Fusion application overview on the Fusion inventory documentation. I'm showing you the navigation of the files also. Fine, we can take a note of it now. Under two to means what my directory fine over and under the fusion inventory documentation we have a fusion application overview documentation double click on it it is a powerpoint right i will go to your file and then go for a bigger one so we all see what what exactly is the fusion application overview so there are multiple erp products available in the market one is the jd edwards one of the people soft one is the siebel oracle sap sap they have purposely they have removed it now and there is a competitor find that they are not removed so uh, what they have done is they found the JD Edwards is good. They have purchased this module, this company itself. PeopleSoft is now Oracle. Siebel is Oracle. Now. So these ERP products have been bought by Oracle. Now Oracle owns everything now. Fine. They're all under Oracle's one. Now. So likewise, there are some 30, 40 ERP products available in the market. Actually. For example, the JD Edwards is very strong in order management. PeopleSoft is very good in people hand management. Siebel is for CRM actually. And Oracle is for financials. So since we bought all this product, and then fusion has integrated everything now they say that we have the highest powerful people in the world now <clears throat> so these are oracle products jd edwards people soft everything has been purchased by them hyperion primavera everything oracle has purchased so it has been amalgamated or fused and then the fusion application is nothing but a combination of these features of these products actually <clears throat> jd edwards ebus people soft hyperion all these features are amalgamated into one match so we use a cloud computing terminology. We'll not see what exactly it is now. What exactly? The practice of using a network or remote servers hosted on the internet to store, manage, and then process the data rather than local server. So we will be doing different servers in different parts of the world, and then they are all getting connected through cloud actually. So physically, they'll be remoting. One will be in Australia, one will be in the US, one will be in Japan. So they will all be uh, what happens, uh, doing uh, different ones, and then the, they are hosted on the internet. To store fine once when you host it it will be coming like this so this is called cloud computing so that is all so collaboration will be done in japan productivity will be somewhere else like that you can even have country specific areas so the local servers are getting integrated via cloud actually or via internet actually this is an oracle cloud so 
uh, IBM is having its own, Amazon is having its own cloud. Every company is having its own cloud actually. Oracle is also having its cloud. So this is the difference between on-premise and then the cloud. So here we will now do this thing of mine. Uh, redemption of our own, all these things there. And then in the cloud, we will be having a centralized control of all the facilities actually. Here, everything is discrete. Here is all centralized in the cloud application. So cloud computing options, how you're doing it? There are three options which are available for you. One is a SaaS software. One is a software as a service. One is a platform as a service. One is an infrastructure as a service. There are three options which are available for you. So one of the options you can choose now, I'm a SaaS, PaaS, or IaaS, they call them. So, in a cloud computing operation, if you are going to be uh, one of us as a SaaS consumer, SaaS will only consume whatever has been configured actually. You'll be having an application, middleware, services, everything will be there. So the services are going to be consumed in the SaaS, in the SaaS environment. You're going to only consume. Whereas in the past, we can very well build also. We can build our applications. Whatever is required, we can very well build it now. Where in IaaS, we can even do even still more actually. IaaS is even very powerful when compared to all those things. So normally we will not try to sell only a SaaS product. And then afterwards, once when the customer is convinced, we'll ask them to buy PaaS. Oracle's PaaS is very costly. It is almost three or four times costly than say SaaS now. But again, the pricing depends upon the marketing strategy. They have different marketing strategy. Sometimes what happens, they even give you 90% discount for the first year. And then next year onwards, you pay full. So to attract the customers, they, they give the first year discount. And then afterwards, they will ask you to pay the full money because they have seen the facilities and then they will not pay actually. <clears throat> So there are multiple marketing ways of this thing. Sir, uh, clients are interested in pass model or uh, pass okay. model? Uh, for example, how the delivery models of fusion cloud application? Here, it is managed by the vendor actually. So let's say Oracle is the vendor. Oracle manages everything, the application, the security, the database, everything is now managing it. Whereas in a pass model, application is the handle over to you now. It is by, it is by, these are all managed by owners, and then this is used by the user now. Fine. Man, man, you are going to do the application. For example, I'll tell you, I have a sales requirement. <clears throat> uh, uh, my company, my customer is in Madras, near Madras, whereas my supplier is in uh, Bombay. So uh, I wanted to buy from Bombay and then stock it in Bombay, transfer it to Madras, and then give it to customers. This is called buy transfer and ship. So SaaS model does not support it at all. When you want to do what? You can even buy and ship or transfer and ship or make and ship only is possible. Buy, transfer and ship in one sales order is not possible. <clears throat> so there is a limitation on SaaS. But if you go for a pass license, the application can be customized to what? Buy, transfer and ship also. So the end users can put their hand on the applications and then modify the application. Oracle's application can be modified in a pass environment. So when you have an access to the application to modify it, you can do wonders. And so many customers' needs can be easily customized. This is very easily possible in Nebus, whereas in Fusion, it is not so. We only have to what go for a higher license, actually. Then only you can touch the application. Otherwise, we can't touch anything at all in this place. Now, certain amount of back-end operations are possible in SaaS. They opened it up, but uh, that we have to talk technical how much they got to go there. So as of uh, now, what happens is not much now. In a pass only, the technical team can go inside and then you can ask the people to customize the application. In IES, we can do even database also customized. Right? Security, you can customize so multiple levels of customization can be done is a very big one now. <coughs> so if you go for this, it's a very costly license. And then only when it is required, you will not go for it. Otherwise, you will not go not go for IAS at all. Even though the operating systems and other things are owned by the Oracle, whereas you can customize this activity. Right. So this is how the model works actually. So when you what happens to raise a SR, they will immediately say it's not possible. You ask the customer to bypass. They I I I did the what happens is support activity in Saudi. Oracle immediately asked me, Nana, convince karo usko. Fine. Pass leni ke convince karo. And when I, they gave the quotation, that guy told them, no, not possible. <laughs> I will not go for it. So that way it works actually. So with a limited amount of application in a SaaS, they give it at a very low price and then they will not tempt the customer to go for a pass actually. <clears throat> that is how Oracle works upon. So there are four types of activities which take place now. One is the on-premise. It is like your wife now. Right. On the right-hand side, software as a service, SaaS, it is like uh, the husband, actually. So in you know, on-premise, what happens? Everything can be modified by you. You can do whatever you want here. Right. You can do everything on on-premise installation. Oracle up to cloud uh, release 9, it was on-premise. It was on-premise plus cloud. We can even have an on-premise also. From release 10 onwards, they have made everything into cloud now. Right. No on-premise at all. Right. Either you go for a SaaS or a PaaS or a yes. They made it in, uh, from <clears throat> 10 onwards. 
<coughs> if you go for a software as a service, <coughs> your husband cannot take any decisions. You only have to use uh, whatever is executed, whatever has been told. So here, nothing can be customized. Whatever is given, you only have to accept it and then you have to work upon. So these are the two intermediary licenses actually. So this way it works actually. So here you manage, others are managing it actually. Uh, Jami here, sir. So SaaS means whatever you have to take. Yeah. There are certain customizations in PaaS. Yes. Every customization customizations can be done in PaaS because our application I will be having with you now. So you can manage the application and data. In IES, you can manage many, many things. Okay. Expensive. <laughs> when you have application in your hand, you can do wonders. Many of the customers' requirement can be customized actually. Just like in yeah. eBus, we customize like eBus. it. Yeah, like eBus. PaaS is equivalent to eBus now. Application can be customized here. It's not possible at all. We have to live only with whatever has been given to you. So that means IaaS will be uh, like very much costly, right? In comparison yeah, yeah. to... Otherwise, you, you, you really need it. You won't go for IaaS at all. <laughs> Customization supported by Oracle or like a... Um... Here in a SaaS, customization is fully done by only Oracle. You will not be allowed. You raise a SR and then now, now it is now changed as an idea now. Right? In the customer connect, you have to create a realize idea. So if the idea is accepted, they will not make the modification. Otherwise, what happens? You have to live with it. Uh, Nana, one question. In SaaS, can we use the integration platform? Yes. Support integration is very much supported. You can very well integrate with the, uh, the other ERPs like SAP, uh, e-business, and then uh, your... Uh, Lock fire, other things can be very well integrated. In so we are, we are writing the custom code in SaaS in that case. If we have, we will no, not. It is an integration as a code you are writing, not on the SaaS as such. So integration, integration is, is actually a software actually. It's a plugin software. So the plugin software will now integrate different uh, ERP systems and then it will now allow for data transfer between uh, the SAP and Oracle actually. We don't write anything on the inside. I cannot customize the sales order uh, uh, way of working. But I can make the sales order to communicate to SAP's purchasing actually with using your integration. Okay, Nana. So in case of uh, SaaS, so if there are multiple, uh, mid, uh, you know, third parties that we have been integrating for customers, so we need to buy the uh, the, uh, the uh, bolt on separately. Or we have to buy. In. That is the license again. Yeah. Oracle Integration Cloud is a license you have to buy, and then that will now facilitate you to communicate with other ERPs actually. Okay. Uh, sir, I have a question. Like uh, in IaaS, so Oracle will install the SaaS uh, application also there? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything will be installed and given to you, but you can uh, modify it. Modify, okay. So the, the, by co so the cost wise, I will say that I, uh, IaaS will be greater than PaaS, greater than course, naturally, yeah. SaaS. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Expensive, most expensive one. All right. You will now go for this much of modifications only when the need is there. Otherwise, you won't go for IaaS at all. So they sell very less in this now. Now they are concentrating only on pass now. They want to push all the SaaS customers into pass now. That is how Oracle is now concentrating on. But uh, people do not agree on it. No? They say, are, we will now live with whatever is there. And then uh, certain features are now brought in into SaaS actually. And Oracle themselves will now bring it in as a standard functionality based upon the need or the demand given by the very, very, very customers actually. So there is a technology change. Yeah. Huh? Personalization is possible, right? In, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Personalization of your screens and then certain amount of data modification is possible. Otherwise, everything is not possible. You have to talk to technical about how much of personalization can be done. Fine, they will not tell you. Now, it is now evolving, actually. Uh, uh, previously, technical cannot touch anything except report making. Now, they have uh, an access to backend also in SAS. <clears throat> certain amount of things have been opened up. So there are technology changes between EBS and Fusion. Nana. Yeah, tell me. Yeah. Anand, yeah, I want to ask one question. Uh, with the, while uh, using custom components in App hmm. Composer, can we change the while using SaaS? Can we change the core transactions while using App Composer? No idea, top fine. The, the inter internal nitty gritty details, I'm not aware of it, no fine. So you only have to ask the concerned people. No, uh, uh, can Fine. I answer? Yeah, yeah, tell me, tell me. Yeah, yeah basically, uh, App Composer, uh, you cannot change the internal logic. See, uh, see, from a SaaS perspective, Oracle has provided a couple of, uh, I mean, uh, they have provided APIs with which uh, you can do changes. So, 
uh, app composer yeah, the flexibility is not much to the extent of changing the internal logic mm -hmm. you can't do that fine 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 so while you work on it whatever you will understand uh, what happens uh, the uh, power of uh, the sas how much you can do how much you cannot do you will understand it so these are all the technology changes as far as eves and fusion applications fine so the server is oracle app server is a web logic server is the ppl sql is a bpel now fine business process execution language likewise what happened there are so many differences have come over is a discover it is a otba uh, for the da or the what is called report making actually fine these are the various ones and then uh, functional changes we have responsibilities in ebos here everything is role based access control so if you give a role then only what happens uh, the person can work upon otherwise you cannot do it and then there are some more things on the ebos and fusion now and that's it as per well. now you understood what I, what exactly is a sas license a pass license everything now let me go there and then we will now create what a user now and we call so i am not going to log in it right now and then i will not create a user actually. so uh, i will tell me uh, uh, do you have a document where it shows the difference between uh, e business and fusion i don't have if i get it somebody please say, give it to me i will now forward it to others now fine e business and fusion if you have any good documents Fine. Please send it to me. I will now uh, put it on the uh, what's called docs and records four. I will now. I will send it to you. Huh? You just send it to me. I will uh, put it. Are you looking for the differences from a functional perspective or from a technical perspective? Only because of functional side. On a functional side. Temple level now. Hello. Do not open your mic and then speak. Now, fine. You press the space bar, leave it. It will get automatically muted now. I am now going to mute all of you now. So let me mute all. So whenever you want to speak, you uh, what's called you you press the space bar and speak. Fine. If you leave the space bar, it gets muted automatically. Otherwise, it will be permanently on and then it will be disturbing others. Okay. The first activity is what I am now going to create a user now. So I have a tools icon now. Fine. Hold that. Click on the tools icon and then here I have a security console. I got so many icons there. Let me reduce the icon. Fine. Hold that. Click on the springboard personalization and then I, under the tools, fine. I don't want reports. I don't want what happens as sales. I don't want this. I don't want this. I don't want this. Remove it now. Fine. Only one. Only two. No. Fine. That. Only two. These two things I want now. Fine. Go there. Click on OK. And then it is not personalized. You can click on tools. Only those. Two, whatever I have chosen, it will be coming up. So I go to the security console, which is nothing but a sysadmin actually. So in the tools, I am not going to security console. I am not going to create a user now. The first one I am going to create. Now onwards, please watch. And then uh, you take notes when you are rerunning the video. no the first one is a role i go to the next one as users users and then on the right hand side add user account i'm going to add it so here i am now going to have what a number now so i have now contacted a ring on g01 and then g02 now i am now going to use for you g03 now the first name is g03 underscore and then the last name is what i will now say imp you need not have to follow my nomenclature but if you follow mine it will be easy for you to practice basically because you will be synced with me actually so i strongly recommend to use my way of law, uh, you know, doing it now so that uh, you will be getting synced when you are practicing it actually fine that way you can do it you go there and then i will now say this user is having a first name and last name i will now give a email name fine brother i will now say uh, put my email nana.app60@gmail.com so the system will now put the email over here and i will now go and change it now i will now say g03 underscore imp imp is an implementer fine brother i'm doing it so i will now set up a password now fine brother so let me set up a password so i will now create a password now and then i will now have a reconfirmation of the password so click on save and close i have now created a user fine the user is having a first name and last name a email id a username and then a password and confirm password click on save and close that's it the user is created he is an implementation user i am now creating it now So click on save and close. It is not done. And go there. You click on the right hand side top, and then click on sign out. Sign out. I am not clicking on sign out. So click on confirm. Now, now is there any difference on... between the users uh, that are shared and the user that we are creating now? Once again, I am not. Um, just uh, let me go ahead, and then afterwards, as I am done, you show it. Okay. I have not uh, gone through uh, the, the text and actually. So go there. I will now say G zero three underscore IMP and go there. I will now put my password over here now. So I am putting a password. I will not click on sign in. So I am not signing in. So I created a user with the first name and last name. So here, if you go there, you will not find the tools at all for him. The tools is not available. 
and then he don't have any other powers actually and if you click on this name that is you see he has got only this many things there is one setup and maintenance is there that is not available at all setup and maintenance is not available it's fine setup and maintenance is basically performing setups so he cannot do anything at all and then he cannot go to the security console at all because the tools is not icon is not also coming so i will now give him more powers now i'm going to click on it go to click on it i will now sign out and then i will now sign in with the previous uh, sign in now and go there so i will now say g01 i have given you one login now through which you can sign in now Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Related to user, there are some uh, two buttons are there: auto provision role and roles. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <clears throat> so go there. I go to the tools, and then I go to the security console. I click on the security console. Go there. And then I will now. There is a warning coming up. I will now come to the warning later on. And now it's available to you. So whenever you do any changes, this is the sysadmin area. It has to be synced to the transaction systems. Syncing of the security setups to the transaction system is done by one. Uh, what happens? A program now. This is called import user and role security. If you do it, the system will be getting forced synced to the transaction system. Otherwise, it has got an inbuilt mechanism of syncing, but that will take a longer time. So it's now giving a warning. Are you why don't you run this program once? So I will now run it also once. So go there. Click on OK now. I will now go to the home icon in the top. I go to the home icon. I go to the tools, and then I go to a thing called scheduled process. Here I am now going to run a ESS job. enterprise scheduler service job i am going to run it now when click on the scheduled process i am going to run a ess job when click on it so click on the schedule new process and then the program is what import find percentage user percentage role import user role find out so i am now going to run it now find out i will now write to the percentage and then give a tab so once when you give a tab it will be giving for populating it automatically it is called import user and role application security job and click on okay now this will now force sync all the kind of mind click on submit now. I click on submit it is now going to force sync it click on okay and then click on the refresh icon it is now going to run and uh, nana sir mm. tell me tell me this uh, is this uh, secure this uh, scheduled process is equal to request of ebs yeah it is equivalent to uh, concurrent program of ebs basically yeah. okay like we run the request there right okay. it is equal to concurrent program of ebs okay you know t on padana sariya you break over padu you t on padu so we are running How that new user got the default icons there? Which one, Chanchan? The new user which we have created when you logged into that user at that time we saw some default icons there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is coming. I don't know how the default because is there any role that is coming? Is a good question. I don't know. <laughs> it was coming. Okay. Uh, somebody make an exploration R and D of this. Now I go to the tools and then I go to the security console. This is this is admin area. I go there and then I will go to the users. Now, now that warning message is not coming because we already done it. So I will now go for G03 and then query now. The three letter characters that find enter it will do query. Fine. Click on the hyperlink of the user. Fine. I will now add certain roles. Fine. Click on the edit mode on the right hand side. I am going to edit it. Click on add role. I am going to add it. So I will now add an employee role. So once when you add an employee role, you have to write it. Fine. E M P L O. It will now come out of the. Ora is a very powerful role. You choose always the Ora. So employee Ora. Fine. It is an abstract role. Fine. Go there. And then select it and then add role. This facilitates what happens. You are scheduled process actually. And then I will now go there. IT security manager also available. IT security manager. IT space SCCU. You do it. It will be coming. So choose it and then select it and then click on add roles. So you can see it will be getting added. And then the setup and maintenance will be coming with the application implementation consultant. A B P L I C A T A O L. Application implementation. Write it now. Thank you, sir. is called application implementation as and when you type it it will be coming off and other so application this is the only way you can query now and you cannot use the what's called the magnifier icon at all so you keep on writing it will be coming so use the application implementation consultant of ora now fine choose it you keep on writing it will be coming you choose it and then select it and then click on add roles fine over so to begin with i am now going to give these three roles this is for mainly for scheduled process and other abstract activities this is for sysadmin activities i had to come to the security console and then this is for performing all the setups actually So as and when I do it, or as there is an assignable and an auto provision now. These two are controlled by the human capital management. So they will do it, and then they will know if you add a role, you have a facility of putting the tick mark or not as assignable or auto provision now. Nana sir, one question. Yeah, one question. There we can see that multiple uh, roles are there related right. to employees. So always you need to check the ora, right? Ora is the best one now. Right? Again, okay. which one you have to choose? Again, uh, you undergo a security training. They will not teach you a lot on this now. 
Vora is the highest power actually. You choose the Vora, fine, that is having a highest power. Uh, so there are multiple ways of configuring the roles actually. Fine. That is not a part of the training. How to customize a role, fine. Uh, in our batch, we have one Surya who has customized the roles. Fine. You can even uh, contact him when you have such a recommendation. As a recommend now. <clears throat> His name is Surya Babu. Hey, Surya, what is your uh, WhatsApp name now? Surya Babu. Huh? Surya Babu only. Okay. Surya Babu is the WhatsApp name. So if you have any role customization, you can talk to him. He will now guide you on this. So the technical, the HCM, HCM team will now say whether it is assignable or not. Let us say if it is assignable. So it is EMP1, EMP is, I am the EMP. And then you are EMP1, EMP2. If it is assignable, you will not be having an access to the security console at all. You cannot have a security console access because you don't have the role of IT security manager. So I will now assign it to you actually. If it is assignable, I can assign it to you. Similarly, auto provisioned is not whenever a user is created automatically certain roles are provisioned to him. So don't worry about the assignable and auto provision. That will be fully taught in a HCM training actually. Is it clear? So don't worry. So this is not our activity at all. Human capital management will be basically designing this now, which role has to have the assignable and then the auto provision actually. When you want to remove it, you can even X mark and then remove it. So I have added these three roles for my EMP one, uh, EMP user actually. I can now see the G0, G0. Excuse me, sir. Uh, what is what is if it uh, the role is not assignable? Doesn't matter. Fine. You you are a person. Doesn't I cannot matter. assign it to you at all. So if the management says that Nana cannot assign the employee role to Das, then I cannot do it. If assignable is not enabled, because you will not have an access to security console at all. So in a real working environment, I am the manager. I need not have to go to a sysadmin to assign it. As a as a project manager, I myself can assign it to you directly. Got it now, fine. Right? Otherwise, sysadmin has got all the powers because sysadmin will be able to come over here now. He can come to the security console and can do wonders actually. He can assign any role to anybody. But as a project manager, I, I need not have to even have this security console access at all. So from my user level itself, I can assign a role to an individual employee. Got it? I'll tell you about how to do that now, fine, later on. Uh, one more question. Can be uh, any user can request any uh, role? Yes. And it would go to approval to any HOD? Yes. Is it possible? In this it's case? all possible in HCM. HCM will now teach you how to request for a role and then how to approve a role and then how to assign to various employees. Everything will be taught in a HCM training. Okay, okay. So the end users will not be having the security console privilege at all. There will be will know the sysadmin actually in the real world. We already have one girl, uh, Baba. Fine. She is facing a lot of problems because she is not having a security console. She is implementing, she is now providing support and then she wants roles and then every time she has to beg actually. Practically she is begging with his manager. You give it. When you ask for a role, his manager is asking, why do you need the role? Sir, I have to do this, this functionality for which I need the role. Baba, Subhu Baba, you can answer now fine. You can put some few words upon your problems basically. It's a real big pain actually. Because certain companies are very much uh, secured actually. They will not allow the security console at all to be accessed by everybody actually. So I've given these three roles, fine, click on save and close now, fine, now it's okay. So uh, if, if we are not giving IT security manager role, then security console cannot be accessed, right? Exactly. IT security console is for the security console. Okay. This is for setup and maintenance actually. This is for your uh, job as well as some other small activities also. So click on okay. done now. So I have added some roles over here, fine, click on it. I will go there, click on sign out. And then I will sir, uh, human research specialist are required, right, sir, for here? Uh, no, I, I, I'll come to that, I'll come to that. So go there. It's a G03 underscore IMP. So I go there. I will not sign it. Now I will not get more icons. And again, I can customize it. Fine. Click on like this finger. And then I will not say, I don't want benefits. I don't want me now. I will not make it minimal actually. I allow the end users to remove it now. Fine. Whatever they are not working on it, fine. let them remove it. Uh, I will not go there. Procurement. Uh, I will not keep it. Now. Tools. Set up and and then the social is not required. Getting started is not required. So let him remove. At later on also, you can introduce it actually. If you don't, if you want it, you can even do a configuration. I'll not remove it. My team, I don't want it now. Go there. And then market cloud sales is not required. Everything is there. Click on OK. So this is now compact actually. The look and feel can be customized with the Springboard customization actually. You can introduce. Nana, we know the uh, So like created this user i mean along with the password uh the user has not uh, changed his password right by logging yeah, in. So he has... to change here no, no need to change at all 
the user need not have to change the password is till he changes there is a expiry policy if you go to the tools find there are so many things are there you go on and explore it your password expiration policy and analytics are there certificates are there user get there are plenty of things are there a sys admin training will now teach you all these things now when the password is going to expire or the administration area we can even set up so don't do all these changes now fine because it is not our cup of tea at all <clears throat> So we just come over here only for creating user, okay? and then uh, don't. If you want, you can R and do an R and D, but not in this training actually. Right? And then if you spoil anything, uh, it will be stopping the particular your uh, instance for all people basically. So don't do much R and D on this. Uh, Nana, Sachin, here just one quick question. Uh, yeah. So right now you have customized the Springboard, right? Uh, yeah. If I am the user, uh, 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 it's only enabling and disabling the yes. the menus, but yes. Uh, to restrict that like if i don't want to yes. go into purchasing yes. that that can be done with the help of technical actually so okay. the left hand side top you have got one navigator icon now. this is called a navigator if you click on it the exact springboard is uh, what happens a duplicate over here so this can also be customized again talk to technical about how to do it i don't know about how to customize it for example the tools the set preferences i don't want how to remove it now. so that, that, that will not teach you about how to personalize the navigation navigator actually so that can be possible through managed data uh... Role for access, for access that we can do it uh, through the, from know. there. We can. This? this is Ramu here, sir. Ramu knows something on how to customize the navigator now. Fine. So you can click on Ramu's name and then uh, correspond with him. So if you have any such requirement. No, sir. Now, this is regarding uh, this one. Uh, uh, role, role, sir. But if you want to perform particular task, if you want to restrict particular task. Do you know just, how to customize the role? Yes, yes, sir. We can do through copy, or we can do. Uh, there is one hmm. task is that through. Uh, no, uh, yes, copy. sir. No. Do you know? How yes, to... yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. You can talk to Ramu. Ramu knows about how to personalize the role actually. Man. So those things are also known to him. So he can do it now. Because our activity itself is so big now. Fine. We have as and when you go there, you will not find. There's plenty in the supply chain. We have to learn it now. The other modules are also is a version actually. So you have to learn first of all our modules, and then later on concentrate on other things. And that's it. So we have created a row user with no roles, and then with roles, and then we have customized that springboard actually. No, no, this is Kapil over here. Uh, yeah. I have seen that there are many roles like abstract role, job yeah, role, duty roles. Yeah, yeah. Are you teaching that also? No, 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 that is not known to me. So can you highlight like what is the difference between abstract job at high level? No, abstract no. job uh, and if, if anybody is knowledgeable, can you give us send me a document? I will now pass it on to others actually. so i know what are the roles to be associated so i will be associating the roles and then i will not do perform uh, the supply chain activity only i am not aware of uh, the particular activity the contact surya surya also is not done lot of r and d on this now fine he knows to a certain extent actually right not to a great extent but certain extent surya babu will also help you out on this one. fine he can even independently correspond with you now it's a great time now yeah is a break time fine so let me go there and then i will not stop it and then I will not. What happens? I will not leave. I will not. Be, you will be in the meeting only. So I will not come back in 15 minutes time because when I stop, the recording will be basically uh, con converted into MP4, and then I will not be back at 7:25 over here now. Fine, you can remain over here now. Fine. 7:25. Uh, the next session will start. Yeah, tell me. Sir, uh, this is Biju. Yeah. Yeah. If anyone wants to um, know more about IAS Pass and SAS, I can give an explanation. You can uh, talk to Biju Radha Krishnan. Your name is Biju Radha Krishnan in uh, WhatsApp, na? Yes. Okay. His name is Vijay uh, Radhakrishnan. What's up? So you can even uh, click on his name, and then you can personally uh, establish a conversation with him. For uh, yes, pass and sass, he knows it. So let us now begin the next session at seven twenty-five. Now we are going to go deep into our subject now. Fine. So the introduction part is over. Now we will be jumping into deep into our subject actually. So I will now leave, and then I will again join before seven twenty-five. Now I will assign it to some of them. and i will not leave now